Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you some of the reasons, or probably one of the main reasons, why your PC won't boot for the first time on your new build. Now, this is a really commonly asked thing, and I see it almost every day on our Discord. And of course, you're more than welcome to join our Discord, should this not be the fix for your particular problem, but that is uh, getting onto another thing. So, this is all about motherboard mounting. Now this is actually probably one of the most important parts of your PC build, and that is getting the mounting pillars right. Now quite often people don't know what the heck I'm talking about when I say, have you installed the motherboard mounting pillars? So I'll give you some close-ups of those on the screen now so you can see what they're like. They're essentially normally little metal pillars, normally with a coarse thread or fine thread, and generally around about five millimeters in height or thereabouts. And these are generally included with your PC case when you purchase it. Quite often, PC cases will have the standoffs actually pre-installed in some kind of default configuration, and of which there are kind of three really main configurations. There's ATX, MicroATX, and ITX. Now, we can get into the realms of EATX as well, which is more covered by the ATX standard, which is the largest of the boards. And generally with that, you'll have probably somewhere in the region of nine of these little motherboard standoffs actually in your case. Potentially though, you might not, which is where you need to actually be careful and put the pillars in the right places. So before we get into the actual individual layouts, which we'll show you on screen shortly, let's take a quick look at a motherboard so you can get an idea of why you need these pillars. So this tiny little board here, this is what is known as an ITX or mini ITX. This is the smallest of form factor motherboards. Now, if we take a look at the back of the motherboard, you'll notice, and if you've ever handled one of these, you'll probably know that there's lots of little sharp contact points on the back. Now these are kind of residual bits from where things are soldered onto the motherboard, but these are all generally electrically conductive. So what happens when you put something which is electrically conductive slap bang against some metal, i.e. in your computer case? Well, you get a short circuit, which is quite often the case of why your PC isn't booting, because you put your motherboard in, one of these many, many pins on the back of the board is possibly touching on something it shouldn't do, i.e. some metal or one of those support pillars being in the wrong place. Some motherboard manufacturers, such as MSI, for example, here, actually do have on the back of the motherboard little areas where it says keep out zone. So this is actually where pillars potentially could be. And actually on the back of this ATX board, this gives you a really good illustration of how micro ATX is actually laid out. So micro ATX being slightly smaller, actually has mounting pins or pillars in either of these two locations and one on the side here possibly. This also is quite common if you've got an ASRock or an NZXT motherboard. They sometimes actually have 10 mounting pillars, giving you an extra one here in between the middle and the bottom ones that you have on traditional ATX. Anyway, I've probably confused you enough by now. Let's take a quick look at the default configurations for those motherboard types. So looking at an ATX motherboard, this is the standard configuration. So you've got three rows of three pillars. So three along the top, three along the middle, and three along the bottom. Now these all need pillars underneath them to support the motherboard, and especially in the bottom corner where potentially you're gonna be plugging in things like your front panel IO, and if you put pressure on there whilst the motherboard's on, which you probably shouldn't do, it's gonna flex and potentially could short out your motherboard. So that's how the ATX format looks. Let's take a look now at the differences on micro ATX, which is the one which actually causes the most problems. So with micro ATX, we have three pins at the top, the same as we do with ATX. And in the middle, generally you also have those three pins as well. Due to some of the size differences on micro ATX motherboards, some of the boards may not have the outer two pins, which are on the far right hand side of the board near where you plug in your main 24 pin power connector. Where it gets really confusing or potentially can cause damage is the bottom set for micro ATX. So if we look at the bottom set, you can see on the far left hand side, there's a single pillar. And generally, if you run your finger straight the way across, horizontally, you should go to another pillar, which should be roughly the same height. Now, depending on your motherboard, some micro ATX motherboards has it about an inch lower. So depending on where that pillar is, you may need to actually move it. Now this is actually really straightforward and simple. All you need is a five mil hex tool. I use one from Draper, which I picked up years ago, but you can use pretty much anything you want or potentially just use a set of pliers. The choice is entirely up to you what you use to actually install it or remove it, but you will need to move that. So look at your motherboard, especially with micro ATX and really look closely at where those holes are 
and just make sure that those motherboard pillars line up exactly. Again, Micro ATX is probably the most problematic and has the most differences with those extra pillars on the far right hand side near where your CPU power is or in that bottom corner where things can be moved either up or down a little bit. So really do pay close attention to where those are. The last one is going to be ITX and this one is really straightforward and pretty much every ITX motherboard comes with the same configuration. So four pins, two at the top, two at the bottom and generally if you buy an ITX case they'll be laid out exactly in the right places because there isn't really much more you can do on those. Where it does get a little bit more tricky is if you've got like an ATX case or a micro ATX case but you're installing an ITX motherboard you're definitely going to have to move some pillars around or at least double check them to make sure they're in exactly the right places. So there you go, hopefully I've illustrated the uh, the problems that can occur with various different motherboard layouts in different cases. Now of course if you've got a case where they've already put the pillars in, generally you're going to be absolutely fine as long as you're sticking like with like, so an ATX motherboard in an ATX case, micro ATX in a micro ATX case, etc, etc, you should be absolutely fine. But definitely, definitely do check before you mount it. It's quite easy to do, just place your motherboard over the top and just make sure that all the pins line up and that you've got to screw through each one of the holes. Sometimes just not having one of those pillars in the right place can cause all the problems and stop your PC booting. Another consideration is if you have a case such as the one we've actually got here at the moment. This is from Techware, this is their Cube. And this one actually has the pillars pre-installed in the micro ATX configuration, but these are actually welded in or soldered in or however they're mounted, but they basically will not move. So this one has the default configuration for the modern version of micro ATX. So you do have the extra pin just slightly lower, but they have left a screw thread there. So if you have a motherboard which does use the older style mounting, you can put one in there. So you can put an extra pillar in. They do include them in the bag as they do with most cases. Like I said earlier, cases generally come with a bag of screws and pillars, etc., which you're probably seeing from some B-roll I shot a little bit earlier. But what do you do if there's a pillar in the wrong place and you can't physically move it? Well, really you should be able to move it, but if there's a case of some sort of bad design going on, what you can do is get some electrical tape or just a, a bit of card or maybe a, a little bit of rubber, something like that, just to try and isolate that metal from the back of the motherboard. It shouldn't cause too many problems, but again, if you're not entirely sure, please feel free to reach out to us either in that comment section below or head over to our Discord and we can have a chat about it. So hopefully this video has gone some way to uh, perhaps educate and also inform you of the different variations of the layouts from motherboards and potentially if you've got a PC which hasn't been able to boot, this might have been the problem. Again, you can also find out an easy way if you're going to put your PCI Express cards in and for some reason the screws aren't lining up and you can't fix your graphics card in because the motherboard is actually sitting about five to 10 millimeters lower than it should be, that's uh, pretty much a giveaway. So do check those pillars. Anyway, I've wrapped this on for way too long. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smashed that like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.